have you followed budding bakers thank you so much for those that didn't notice i launched my very first book on friday and it is thanks to you that i sold out three times not once not twice three times i bow to you all i had no idea of the anticipation and demand for this amazing book thank you so so much. So, without further ado, we'll just get on with our recipe because today we are doing a, a delicious cookie pie. This is no ordinary cookie pie. This is full of Nutella. I would eat Nutella quietly in a dark room with a spoon and a jar all to myself. This is what we are doing today. So, this is a delicious sticky cookie dough but it's a sandwich with some nutella in the middle and it is absolutely divine now i have left this one overnight in the fridge to chill because it is so much easier to cut it is delicious as a little snack but it's fantastic to wrap up with a little bit of grapefruit paper for school lunches now before you kill me with all of the sugar it's not really that much sugar in comparison to a traditional victoria sponge so don't look at this as if I am feeding your children, bouncing off the walls with Nutella and chocolate. This is a once in a lifetime treat. It is leading up to Easter. We're going to, you know, a little treat. You don't have to eat the whole cookie pie. Although you could eat the whole cookie pie because it's that delicious. So without further ado, we are starting with 200 grams of butter that I have got in my mixing bowl. I've got 250 grams of brown sugar. Now you can do the dark brown sugar, but I just find that the dark brown sugar is very heavy in the cooking. So the light, soft brown sugar is absolutely fab. Now we're gonna beat that for about a minute. Don't overbeat, but we'll just put it in wow, 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 wow. While we are waiting, we have 300 grams of plain flour and we have got one teaspoon of baking powder because I want it to rise a little bit because we want to have a cookie pie. Now, it would have been a great idea, Trish, to put this into a larger bowl, but we have got our baking powder and our flour, and I'm waiting for that sugar and butter to mix through. While we're waiting, I am also using Dr. Uke, apologies for the pronunciation, mini chocolate chips. I've tried this cookie dough probably 4,000 times, different layers. This is a trend currently at the moment, where, especially in the UK, they have cookie pies. Now, I'm not joking when I say cookie pies. Cookie pies could be three, four inches high. You can layer with cookie dough, Nutella. You could do the Biscoff spread. You could do peanut butter, Cadbury spread. You can go crazy. But some will layer with another layer of cookie dough and repeat, repeat, like a cookie lasagna. That would bring me to the edge and a sugar coma. So I don't think I could do that today. So I'll turn our mixer down. Make sure I get off the butter off our beater, our trusty Kenwood. Thank you, Kenwood. You have stood the test of time over these 12 months. So I'm just scraping down our cookie dough. You can hear the squelch, squelch. Now, instead of adding eggs, Full eggs, I'm adding egg yolks. Now the secret of adding egg yolks is because this is going to tenderize your cookie dough. It's going to give a lovely chewy texture. So in goes two egg yolks and keep the two egg whites. You can put them in the fridge. You can even put them in the freezer. And you can use them again. You can use them for pavlova. You can use them for macaron. I have a fabulous recipe for macaron. Might even do a macaron recipe if anyone is interested next week. And they are so easy. So down it goes. So just think when you're adding an egg yolk, you get the creamy texture. It tenderizes your cookie. It's absolutely gorgeous. You also get a sort of um, a richer flavor. Okay. So we now have, have a look here. Zoom in, zoom in. I'm like Keith Floyd. Come in and have a look at this baby. So we've quite a sticky dough. And in goes my flour. I'm going to give it a shake, 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 shake. So 300 grams of plain flour. In it all goes, tap, tap, tap with my lovely containers. Clean as you go, clean as you go. 
So while that is mixing, I am getting a full bag of our mini chocolate chips, okay? So I'm just adding the dark chocolate chips. Milk chocolate makes this very sweet. You need the dark chocolate to contrast against the flavor. Sarah, if you're watching, you don't like dark chocolate, suck it up and put it into this recipe. It makes a huge difference. So in goes a full bag. So that's 100 grams of mini chips. And we're done. Boom! Now you could technically just eat this with a spoon with your cookie girl. <laughs> I've got Sophie with me this morning and Sophie would just stick her head in this bowl and chomp her way through cookie dough. So scrape all our goodie bits, take off our bag, bag, ah, 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 yummy. So we have got this really lovely sticky dough. Thank you, Mr. Kenwood, you've been amazing. Titanium. Move that to the side. Just use our spatula and see how lovely and sticky this is. Out it comes. Every last bit. Try to be nuts when you see these things and they leave a little bit in the bowl. Get everything out of the bowl. And it's so sticky and so delicious. Bum, 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 bum. Do, 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 do. So we have got roughly about 900 grams. Now I have got my weighing scales because I am going to weigh it and it is boom 900 grams. So 900 grams using a knife which would have been a good idea if I had got it ready just to take off a third roughly. So come on kids a third of 900. What's a third of 900? A bit of maths lesson this morning. It's 300. So we have got 300 300 grams that's going to be the top and then we've got what have we got left if we take 300 from 900 what have we got we have got 600 grams so 600 grams is what we're going to use in relation to pressing it in, into our tin clean as you go get rid of everything you do not need now i have a nine inch round tin i have literally just greased it there is no lining involved it is a non-stick, which does make it that little bit easier. Now, one of the things I find as well is that when you have a tin, a non-stick tin, you'll always have a lip. And this is a bit of a trick. If you turn it upside down and have the flat side, when it comes to serving your cookie dough, when you cut it, it's much easier to remove off the tin. So I do it upside down. Well, I don't do it upside down. I put the tin base upside down. So we have got our 600 base of our cookie dough and in this goes and I'm just going to compress it. Now, if this is going to be eaten by family, listen, we've shared cups, we've shared knives, forks, spoons, give me a taste of that, it's low, but if it's for somebody else, wear food grade gloves when you're compressing the cookie dough because it just makes everything more hygienic. So again, all I'm doing is I'm pressing. So if you want to see this, so zoom in. And I'm pressing down, but as I'm pressing down, I'm also creating a little bit of a lip on the edge. And there's a reason. Not only are you compressing the cookie dough onto the tin, you're also making the base that little bit thinner, pushing it up the sides to create a little barrier. Because when you're putting on your Nutella, you will have a lovely sort of dam. So I'm pressing this all the way around so you have a bit of a, a cookie dough. Cookie dough dam. CDD, cookie dough dam terminology. So I'm just pushing it up against the sides and again, making sure I am pressing it down my fingers. And this is why kids love it because it is such a tactile recipe. It is great fun. So push, 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 push. Now, if you have more time, the next step is another little trick I do. Trisha's trips, trips, tricks. <laughs> Trisha's tricks and tips. So with my scales, I'm bringing it to zero. I am getting a jar of Nutella. I am putting it on my scales. 
I'm going to bring it back to zero. So, with a spoon, in fact, with it, two spoons. I'm going to show you the magic of scales, kids. So instead of scooping out your Nutella into a container and weighing out 200 grams, so 200 grams is needed for this piece of cookie dough, can you off the lid? Doesn't help when your hands are covered in cookie dough. Oh my God. Lads, make sure when you compress your cookie dough, your hands are covered in cookie dough when you try and open the tele jar, rule 101. So bring it back to zero. Okay, so just so that you see, and I know this sounds ridiculous, you've got zero on the scales, zero on the scales. Now I am going to take out, whoa, now 85 grams it's telling me. This is now 140 grams. Oh, the smell. 180. And one more for the road. 200 grams. Now, that came out of our Nutella jar. We didn't dirty up a bowl. Take it off the scales. Boom, Trisha's tip for the day. With our spoon, I am just going to slather and spread out the Nutella. So can you see, we have that little lip. Now, if you decide, I would rather eat a dead sock than eat Nutella, you can have Biscoff spread. You can decide it could be the Cadbury spread. You can decide it could be peanut butter, which is divine, may I add. So I am bringing this all to the edge because with the other part, our 300 grams of our cookie dough, we're going to put this on top. Say what? Yeah, we're making a cookie dough sandwich with Nutella. It's so lovely. Uh, uh, uh. Nutella, yummy. Now, this stage, I don't have one prepared earlier because I've already made, made one. This ideally would go into a freezer for 10 minutes. The reason you're putting it into the freezer for 10 minutes is because the Nutella will firm up. So when you do put that soft cookie dough, you are not spreading out the Nutella and the cookie dough at the same time. The cookie dough would be still sticky. Your Nutella would have firmed up in the freezer. It makes it much easier for the cookie dough to glide. Glide, I say, over your cookie dough. So just to give it a helping hand, flatten it a little bit. Whoa! Now, ideally, this would be frozen. So in that goes, as is. And then you use your fingers to manipulate the cookie dough right to the edge. Now you can see, if you want to zoom in, as I'm doing it, the cookie dough is cracking. The reason the cookie dough is cracking, as you can see, the Nutella is so soft underneath the layer of cookie dough, it's making it that little bit more challenging, okay? So this is where Trisha's tip, put it in the freezer. Put this cookie dough and the Nutella layer in the freezer for about 15, 20 minutes. And the only difference is you're adding an extra five minutes onto your baking. So look, I'm like, I'm like a typewriter. Ching, 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 ka ching, ching, ka ching, ching, ka ching, ching. Push your cookie dough out. Because if I'm very posh and dainty, but I'm certainly not. So put it all the way. You will see around the perimeter that you have got your Nutella. And that will melt deliciousness into your oven. But ideally, if you have this in the freezer before you spread the cookie dough on top, you will have a more even finish. So we get to that stage. That's not it. That is not it. We're just putting a few. <laughs> Look away! So these are mini chocolate chips. Now, the other thing I like about these Dr. Utter chocolate chips are bake stable. Bake stable chocolate chips means that you will still have the chocolate remain intact as they bake in the oven. They are particularly 
fabulous for cookies because they remain stable. They don't ooze and spread all over the place. So they keep their shape, so they're bake stable. Okay, pressing them in, pressing them in, another little. More is more. Oh, now behind me, I have got my oven. It is preheated at 180, but I am now gonna drop that to 160 and I'm gonna put it into the oven for 25 minutes. 25 minutes and take it out. Now this is where, do not insert the skewer into this cookie dough thinking that it's not cooked or is it cooked? It will be 25 minutes in 180 to preheat. Drop that temperature to 160 fan. In that goes. I am dropping the temperature and that is going to go in for 25 minutes. I'm going to set my timer because I'm going to forget. Two, three, four, five. 25 minutes. So when that cookie pie comes out, as you can see, We've had a few mice in the house and they've already helped themselves. Pretend this was a full pizza cookie dough. When it comes out, don't even attempt to cut it because it would be like molten cookie dough. You need to leave that for about an hour just to come to room temp. Even after an hour, it is still soft. It is delicious served with ice cream, even with a caramel sauce. You can go nuts and put nuts and walnuts and almonds or whatever you can, the case may be. But if you leave it that little bit longer and put it into the fridge, even for a couple of hours, what happens, it becomes a cookie bar and it becomes chewy. And it's like a cross between a white chocolate, a brownie, a cookie, a chocolate chip. It's delicious. So we have done a cookie pie for today. We have also bounced around the kitchen on Friday and Saturday with all the excitement of my amazing book. Thank you so much for the support. You have no idea. I was squealing, thinking we had a reserve for the books on Friday, thinking I might sell 20 if I'm lucky. We're talking hundreds have gone out and sold through Amazon and the book depositories. Mwah, 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 mwah. Thank you so much. So check out the book depository. Currently, I am so sorry, but it is out of stock. But there is an option of putting in your email address. And if you put in your email address, it will notify you when the stock comes in. And it's worth getting. It's worth getting. I may add, all the photographs that I have used for the book have come from my kitchen. I am no David Bailey. So if you look at a cake, cake or a cookie, you go, oh my God, the picture isn't great. That's me during a pandemic with nobody else in the kitchen other than me trying to focus. And with my Indonai glasses, that was a challenge in itself. My book is also full of Irish isms. So when you see something to beat the living daylights out of it, don't beat the living daylights out of it, it's a charm. Okay, so we had to put a disclaimer. <laughs> we had to put a disclaimer into the book that you don't beat the living daylights out of things and crack, bash, smash, wallop is just a term <laughs> of what I use in my baking and it's not to be taken literally. Do not nosedive into cakes and cookies. All that wonderful terminology is in my book. Thank you so much for supporting me. I shall have more goodies on the way for next Sunday. I shall see you at 10.